What does he kind of see me? Yeah, good. What is it? the word eka is one, dasi means ten. So kadasi means eleven. So? <laughs> what is that? Uh, what is that verse? Saru sanga, saru sanga, saru sashri hoi, labamata. Labamata means one eleventh of a second. Labamata saru sange. Arva City Hoi, one eleventh of a second with a pure devotee, and you can be fully purified. Jai Sri Panchatatva Ki, Panchatatva Makam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa, Swarupakam, Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam, Sri Panchatatva Ki Jai. So we are moving into the uh, topic of Lord Balaram, is that correct, tonight? Okay. So I uh, have some names of Lord Balaram that exhibit some of his transcendental mm -hmm. characteristics, qualities. Where's your friend? She went to the retreat. If you put the verse, verse on the board, it's not going to do any good because I'm not going to speak from the verse. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak from the Bhagavad from the, uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. Let's see here. So we'll do a little quick here, Todd. Jaya Radha Mahava Kunjabi Jai Radha Mahavan, Kunjabi Han, 
Okay, so there's a verse from the Garga Samhita which gives a nice uh, description of some of the outstanding features of Lord Balaram's appearance. It says, I glorify Lord Balarama, decorated with a glittering crown, bracelets, tinkering ornaments, moving locks of hair on, on his cheeks, splendid earrings on his handsome lotus face, and garments like dark monsoon clouds, holding a great club and plow, fulfilling all desires, and handsome like a mountain of ice and snow. Mm. So some of the names of Lord Balaram are, the first one is he is Balabhadra. Balabhadra means he is supremely powerful and happy. And so the word Bhadra means happy, and Bala means powerful. And so one of his quality is he's Balabhadra. So we also pray to Lord Balaram. Sometimes we pray to Lord Nityananda, who is non different than Lord Balaram. Uh, Haha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suki Kripa Bolo Kono Kono Amira Bara Duki. We sing that every morning here as we greet the deities. We're praying that Lord Nityananda, you are so kind and you are so merciful and you are very happy. So please make me happy. <laughs> so we actually are asking the Lord, please give me happiness, or spiritual happiness, transcendental happiness, real happiness. Because he is Balabhadra, he is full of transcendental happiness. It says he doesn't say he's powerful, it says he's supremely powerful. That means he's the power of the power. The power house, not just the someone who receives power, but someone who is the source of power. And so he is supremely power. He is Balabhadra. We hear the word Bhadra many times. Somewhere we say Subhadra, Krishna's younger sister. His older brother is called Balabhadra, Balabhadra also known as Balarama. Mm -hmm. That's one of his names, Balabhadra. And uh, 
means he is supremely powerful and happy. So we want to become happy in our Krishna consciousness because Krishna consciousness is susukam, kartam, avyayam. It's a principle of eternal happiness. And so we are, we want, everyone wants happiness. Everyone strives for happiness. Everyone makes plans for happiness. But real happiness is to connect with the supreme source of happiness, Sri Krishna and his expansion, immediate expansion as Sri Baladev or Balaram. So he's given the name Balabhadra. Mm -hmm. Another name he is called Ramabhadra and Rama. He is the supreme enjoyer, so enjoying and happy, some are synonymous. So uh, you want to enjoy, so he is the, he's always enjoying, so he's called Ramabhadra. He knows how to enjoy because he is the source of enjoyment in his, the devotees enjoy in association with him. And he's called the Rama, and Rama means pleasure. So everyone wants pleasure. Everyone wants happiness, but no one wants unbreakable happiness that is comes and goes. It's broken by situations. Is material happiness? Spiritual happiness is continuous. <coughs> when one achieves the mercy of the Lord, one can experience happiness at every moment. And that happiness comes in different forms: being satisfied, being generous, being kind. Uh, uh, being uh, concerned about the happiness of others. <laughs> so he is also called Rama. Uh, sometimes there's a question whether the Maha Mantra refers to Balarama or does it refer to Ramachandra or does it refer to Radhika Raman or Parasarama. As Prabhupada said, uh, it could be any of the Ramas. <laughs> it's your choice, actually, because it, it's it's subjective in this in the mantra. There was two devotees, two senior devotees. They came to Prabhupada, and they were come much, pretty much. It was an argument. One was saying, "No, Balaram and the, the Ram and the Bal and the mantra, Hare Krishna mantra means Balaram." The other one was saying, "No, it's Ramachandra." So Prabhupada writes about this in Chaitanya Charitamrita. You can actually see it in the purport. He said, he actually says this in the purport in one verse. And they said, you know, they came to me and I explained. <laughs> it could be Balarama, it could be Ramchandra. It's subjective. <laughs> in other words, what is your mood? When your mood may be Vrindavan, that is Balaram. Your mood might be Vaikuntha that it's Lord Ramchandra, like that. Or it could be deep in Vrindavan, then it's Radhika Raman. Mm -hmm. Because Krishna is also called Raman, or Radhika Raman, mm -hmm. the henpecked husband of Radharani. He's known as Radhika Raman. Mm -hmm. like that. Getting a very strong cold air breeze here. Uh, For us swamis, we, we get sick fast. <laughs> but I can uh, do a little adjusting here. This on is okay. This is my all purpose keeper warmer. You won't be surprised how warm this thing is. You put it on, you feel completely warm, even in cold weather. Jai. <laughs> Maharaj, chill out. <laughs> Okay, so he is Rama. He is also called Sankarshana. The word Krishna comes from the word Karshing, 
Karshana, which means attractive. So Krishna is also called Karshana. Sometimes people say Karshana. Karshana is another name for Krishna. But it's the etymological root word of the word Krishna. So we see it here for Balaram. He is called Sun Karshana. He is also all attractive. <laughs> In the Bhagavatam, there's one uh, purport which gives the names of Balaram, and San Karshana is mentioned. And it gives another explanation of the word San Karshana. It means that he who unites the families of the Vishnus and the Kurus. Mm -hmm. So the Vishnus and the Kurus were related. So by the birth of Lord Balaram, they became more connected in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So he's called, in, he's called Sankarshana. He is also called Achuta. Achuta means fallible. Achuta means infallible. We are always making mistakes. We have problems. We make, we have four defects. We have, we become illusioned. We have imperfect senses. We make, we have a, make mistakes. And we have a cheating propensity. These are the four defects of the conditioned souls. So we make mistakes. Do they say to err is human? But for the supreme, or those who are fixed on the sat platform of pure devotional service, they develop this, what is called infallible nature. And one of the names for Balaram is he is infallible, or achuta. It also refers to Krishna. He's also called Achuta. Uh, another name for Balaram is Revati Raman. <laughs> Revati Raman. Um, Revati Raman is interesting because Balaram has two concerts, consorts. One is Revati and one is Kalindi. The story of Revati, how he, she became his consort, is very interesting. There's one king, his name was King Kumuda, and uh, he had a beautiful, very highly qualified daughter named Revati, and he wanted to find a husband. So he was thinking, there was a whole, ma there was many persons who were coming forward for husband for Revati, and many of them were qualified. But he wanted the best of all husbands. So he decided, now this King Kamuda was very powerful. He went all the way up to Brahma Loka to ask Lord Brahma, you choose a husband for my good daughter. But when he got to Satya Loka, Brahma Loka, Brahma was busy, so he didn't come out immediately. So after one moment of Brahma's time, he, he appeared. And then King presented his concern. And he said, you know, please, could you choose a husband for my, uh, for my daughter? And Brahma said, you know, all those persons that you were thinking of, they're all dead and gone. <laughs> because, and this is a fact, the higher you go in the upwards, in other words, the higher you go into the cosmic manifestation, the more you are, time slows down. It's like we also, we also hear like one day on the heavenly planets is six months of our time on the earth's planet. But Brahma is even slower. So one moment of Brahma's time is like thousands and thousands of years for the earth planet. <laughs> so Brahma said, you know, you've been here for at least a moment or two. <laughs> Everybody is gone and dead now <laughs> that you're thinking of. <laughs> Fortunately, he brought his daughter with him. <laughs> so she, she was still there. <laughs> and uh, so, um, Well, yeah, and then so Lord Brahma said, well, I actually have a, uh, I have a uh, husband for you, 
and he's very qualified. His name is Lord Balaram. <laughs> so he thought, oh, that's that's the best choice. So Balaram happened to be in the area, <laughs> and he came out and he saw Ravati, but then he saw how small she was. <laughs> so what he did was he stepped on her feet and. W with his hands, he pulled her up <laughs> and made her taller. <laughs> because Balaram is pretty big. <laughs> and us earthlings, we're kind of like real short. <laughs> we're all kind of like tiny little things. Just like it says, the uh, warriors on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, uh, they were about 20 feet tall. So three and a half feet is a meter. So that's about what, five meters? <laughs> so that, yeah. That, and Krishna was 14 feet tall. He was short. He was kind of short. So 14 feet tall is about three meters? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was his baby feet. <laughs> Krishna was big. So as time goes on, people become smaller and smaller. <laughs> and then. At the end of the age, everybody will be what they were. The word in English is pygmy. The pygmy is a little dwarf guy type of person. So this is the nature of Kali Yuga. So that's how he married Revati. So he had two consorts, Kalindi and Revati, like that. Hmm. Okay, so... And then another name for Lord Balaram is called Deva, which means the splendid supreme personality of Godhead. So it refers to divine. He's Deva, he's divine. And he is splendid. Splendid really refers to divine in that sense of the word. And um, so he's, you, he's another name he can be called as Deva. Mm -hmm. Splendid means somebody who is exceptionally wonderful to be with. <laughs> Another name is Kama Pala. Kama means desire, and Pala means one who fulfills desires. So he can fulfill all your desires, <laughs> spiritual desires, <laughs> like that. So he's called Kama Pala. We have material desires. And we have some spiritual desires. The idea is to replace our material desires with spiritual desires and then become what they call desireless. Desireless means no material desire. So we pray to Lord Balaram, my dear Kamapala, please give me only spiritual desires. Because with spiritual desires we can have become happy and we can make advancement in devotional service. Material desires are like the things that we have associated with in this world. Is we want to somehow enjoy the senses. But the senses cannot be enjoyed in a material way without becoming frustrated. But in the spiritual way the senses become enlivened by spiritual enjoyment. <laughs> So he is called Kamafala. He fulfills spiritual desires. He is also called Halayuda. He who carries a plow weapon. You see in the hands of Lord Balaram, he has a club and a plow. And you see, he, one, sometimes his club is in his right hand and sometimes his plow is in his right hand. <clears throat> and... Uh, why, what is the meaning of the plow? The plow is, it cultivates the field. It's used for cultivation of a field. So the heart is considered to be like a field. So we want the heart to be fertile so, they can, so the spiritual master can plant the seed of bhakti into the heart and then bhakti will grow in that fertile field. So before the field can be planted, it has to be plowed. And that means it has to be removed from the weeds. So that's why he carries that plow, because he plows the field of our heart and makes it, what we say, fertile for bhakti. 
And of course, he carries the plow. He also uses that plow to kill demons, too. He grabs them by the neck with the plow and then with the club. <laughs> finished. <laughs> I remember when I first went to Chicago, and there's the deities of Balaram were there. And I had been in New Vrindavan for many years before then. And we had deities of Balaram there. So when I came to Chicago, I noticed that Balaram in Chicago, he had his club on his right hand and his plow on his left hand. And when I was in New Vrindavan, his club, his, his plow was on his right hand and his club was on his left hand. It was, the symbols were opposite. So the temple president was there and I was taking Darshan of Balaram and I said, hmm, you know, I mentioned how it's different in, and he said, yeah, that's natural. He said in New Vrindavan, it's a farm community, so he's plowing the fields. But here, there's many demons, so he's <laughs> in Chicago. So, <laughs> so his, he needs his, plow, his club in his right hand. <laughs> I thought that was a perfect answer. <laughs> Couldn't have been any better. <laughs> so he's called Hala, Yuda. Um, one who carries the plow weapon. He's also called Nilambara. Mm -hmm. He's dressed in blue garments. Um, he's white, but he's dressed in blue garments. His garments are always blue because Krishna is blue. <laughs> so he wants to show his love for Krishna by wearing garments that are colored blue, like that. <laughs> he is called uh, Sweta Varna. Which means, Sweta means white, and Varna means complexion. He is fair complexioned or white complexioned. White is a beautiful color. White is the composite, or what we say, the, yeah, the, comp, the composite of all colors. If you mix all colors together, it comes out to be white. <laughs> But black is the op is the opposite. Black is the absence of colors. White is the when we say the conglomeration of all color. So he's called Svetavarna. His color is white, like a whitish uh, spring cloud. In the springtime, you look up in the sky, you see beautiful white clouds. They can be, we can be, we remember Balaram by that. He's also called Baladev. Again, Deva means splendid and Bala means powerful. He's both splendid and powerful. How powerful is he? Well, <laughs> we cannot estimate that because our ability to estimate power is limited. In this world, we can find someone who's very powerful. There's one story where there was one devo one man, he was very strong. He could take big, thick phone booths. I don't know, in, in America they have these big phone books. And he can just rip it like this. So one day the devotees were out on uh, Sankirtan. And they were doing book distribution. They were distributing one book called Science of Self-Realization. It's a thick book about this book. So they met this man, and he was a big, powerful guy. He was on television. He used to rip books. <laughs> so they gave him the book. He says, I rip books like this. <laughs> they said, try it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> he couldn't do it. He was astonished. He couldn't do it. He said, yeah, book's transcendental. <laughs> really, this is a true story. He couldn't, rip the, he couldn't rip it. He was ripping books that are like three times as big as that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, power. In the material world, people are very powerful. I remember when I was in New Vrindavan, and we met one yogi, he came. It was in the winter time. He was very powerful. He, he took a light bulb and went 
and made powder out of it like this, just went like this. He had one of these you know, things for constructions, they call them rebarbs, you know, those iron bars, and just bend it. He had a girlfriend there, too. And one of the devotees said, yes, what his girlfriend does to him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, that was a little bit of a... He was kind of proud of his strength. <laughs> he was, so he was, uh, you know... They, he said, uh, uh, I'm going to hold my breath and you can check my pulse. So he held his breath and they checked his pulse, no pulse. <laughs> so he was just... He was just trying to, dis, you know, display his strength. The devotees weren't. We just, he was there for like a couple of weeks. And he kept asking us, can he do a demonstration of our, his strength? And we said, you know, you know, we know Krishna. He's nothing. He, you're nothing compared to Krishna. <laughs> anyway, but he was so determined. So we finally gave him a demonstration day. So he did it. So he also used to, he, what he could do is that somebody would sit in a car and he would start the, People start the engine and drive off, and he could hold the car, you know, without the car moving. So he tried to do that, but it was it was the winter time, and it was ice on the ground, so it didn't work. <laughs> so he looked pretty bad. But people in the material world, they are strong. Some people are very, very strong, extremely strong. But Balaram will make them look like you know, like uh, weaklings. <laughs> Balaram's strength is, he keeps all the planets floating in the spiritual world and the material world by his power. He can make the planets float. That's Balaram. He's gravity. <laughs> we call it gravity, but that's the word that the scientists use. But it's actually the power of the Supreme Lord to keep things afloat like that. And that's, that's, that's Lord Balaram. Mm -hmm. He's also called Achyuta Graja. He is the elder brother of the infallible Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna has a younger sister, Subhadra, and his brother, Omnila Chala Nivesaya, Nityaya Paramatmane, Balabhadra Subhadram Bya, Jagannathaya Te Namaha, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. So Balaram, he is there, men, men of the personality. There's one story <coughs> where we had deities of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani in uh, a place called Raipur, which is not far from Nuvan, from uh, from uh, Mayapur. And we have beautiful deities of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. Have you seen those deities in, in that place? Yeah, anybody? Those big deities? Anybody else? It's a beautiful. Those deities are quite magical. They do. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He was, yeah. So there's one story where one Islamic boy and one Hindi boy, Hindu, they were friends. So they came, they were walking, and they came to the temple. And the Hindu said to his Muslim friend, uh, I'm going to go in and see the deities. And his friend said, you know, you go in. I don't like to see these idols. Because, you know, in Islam they don't believe in deities. They think they're idols. So his friend went in, the Hindu boy came out, and he had some prashadam. And he offered to his friend, he said, no, no, I don't take any food offered to idols. So, the day ended. That Islamic boy went to sleep that night. And in the, in the dream, Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra Maharani appeared to him in a dream. And Balaram was choking him. <laughs> really choking him. And he was, he was actually dying in the dream. And... Uh, Balaram said, you don't want the food of my brother, you should die. This was what he was saying, and he was choking him in a dream. And Jagannath was there, and he was laughing, and Subhadra was saying, kill him, kill him. <laughs> you know, she's, 
So <laughs> the next day, he woke up. His neck was all red. I mean, he actually had physical marks. He came to the temple, and he was really humble. <laughs> he said to the, in the Pajari, he said, what's wrong with you? He said, well, you know, that uh, uh, last night those three, those three, you know, forms, they appeared in my dream. And this white one was choking me. <laughs> And the, the the black one was laughing, and the yellow one was saying, "Kill him." <laughs> so, do you have some of that food? <laughs> Balaram gave him special mercy. <laughs> yeah, that's a very popular story. They always tell that story all the time. <laughs> Those deities are quite amazing. Yeah. He's also called Palambagna. He's the killer of Palambasura. Palambasura was one of the demons that changed his form to look like a cowherd boy in Krishna Leela. And he took part in Krishna's pastimes. And the cowherd boys liked to play games. So they divided themselves, Krishna's team and Balaram's team. And Palamba, disguised as a cowherd boy, went on Krishna's team. And Krishna's team lost, and the losers had to carry the winners on their back. So Palamba, who was a cowherd boy, had to carry Balaram on his back. So he was thinking, I'm going to kill this cowherd boy. He was a demon. So he starts going and going, going, and Balaram saying, where is this cowherd boy going? He's going so far away. And then all of a sudden, he realizes this is not a cowherd boy, and then he turns into his form as Palamba's sort of big monster, and Balaram says, oh, he's a demon, so he went, <laughs> punched him, <laughs> and describes that it was, a, his head cracked open and blood came out, it was like a river of red oxide, it looked so beautiful. <laughs> so that was the story of Palumba. So who, what does Palumba represent? He represents improper relationships with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, Balaram, who is the original spiritual master, he destroys that anartha, that mood of associating with the opposite sex in the wrong way or for the wrong reason, like that. So that is called Palamba. So we pray, he's called Palamba Bhagna, like that, the killer of Palambasura. He is also called Mahavira. Maha means great, and Vira means hero. He performs heroic pastimes. He is also called Rohineya. He is the son of Rohini. Uh, when Balaram appeared in the womb of Devaki, Krishna was concerned that Balaram would be, might be hurt by Kamsa, because Kamsa was killing the children of Devaki one after another. So he he notified uh, Yogamaya, and he said to Yogamaya, I have a service for you. And he said, I want you to transfer Balaram from the room of Devaki to the room of Rohini, because Rohini is in Vrindavan, and we want to keep Balaram safe. And Yogamaya said, <laughs> You got any other service? <laughs> I don't. This is too difficult for me. <laughs> but Krishna said, "Don't worry, I'll I'll empower you. You do it." <laughs> so she did. So uh, Devaki, on her seventh uh, pregnancy, woke up one morning and she felt like she had a miscarriage, and she did. The child was gone. So the seventh son was transferred. And Rohini was pregnant in Vrindavan, and that child was replaced with Balaram. So Balaram was brought up by Rohini, and he's called Rohini Neya, Rohineya. He's the son of Rohini, and therefore also the brother of Krishna, who Rohini and, and Yasoda were like two sisters taking care of Krishna and Balaram. So it's another name. And he's also called 
Pratapavan, he means he is very powerful. Very, not only powerful, but very powerful. So we want to get power so we can uh, make advancement, spiritual power, not material power. Spiritual power is needed because Maya is very everywhere. Maya is very strong. Prabhupada said chanted to perform devotional service is like shaving with a razor. If you're a little inattentive, you could be a cut. So devotional service is like that. We have to be very, very attentive every minute in our execution of devotional service. Otherwise, we could also make a mistake, commit an offense, and uh, sometimes even fall down. So we have to be careful. So we pray to Lord Balaram as Balabhadra, as Pratapavan, as the supremely powerful one. He gives what we call tr uh, transcendental strength, not material strength. That's there also. Because when you become a devotee, you also become strong too, <laughs> physically. So yeah, so that's, that's another quality of... Uh, <laughs> Balaram. So these are uh, about 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12. I think that's about 15 names of Balaram that we mentioned. To be exact, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 names of Balaram here. So I'll stop there and let's see if there's any comments or questions on Lord Balaram. Yes, what did he? Hare Krishna, thank you for the class. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the connection between killing demon, demon Pralambasura and the uh, wrong relationship with the opposite sex. Can you explain? Yeah, explain? well, um, yes, because in there's two demons that were killed by Balaram, Vrindavan demons, and the rest were killed by Krishna. And so it explains that these two demons represent certain anarthas, bad qualities. Now, the demons that Krishna killed and the anarthas they represent can be destroyed by the power of devotional service. But the demons that Balaram killed, because he is Guru Tattva, the spiritual master gives you the power and you have to destroy that anartha yourself. And that's the Dainakasura represents um, what we say, what does Dainakasura represent? He represents working hard for material gain or collecting a lot of useless knowledge. So those, that Anartha, you have to get rid of yourself. Similarly with Palumbus, or he represents, um, you know, the characteristic of wrong association with the opposite sex in order for, in order to enjoy uh, illicitly. So in that characteristic, you have to make the effort to, uh, to get rid of that yourself. And the spiritual master, who is empowered by Balaram, gives you that direction, he gives you that mercy. But you have to do it. <laughs> so that's exclusive for Balaram, those two demons, Dainagasur and Palambasur. <laughs> so that's why it's mentioned. One has to make that effort. Where the other demons and the Anarthas, they represent the power of devotional service itself, in other words, as you make advancement in devotional service, these anarthas go. But these other two don't go simply by your advancement in devotional service. You have to make an effort to get rid of them yourself. <laughs> they're, they're very powerful anarthas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, does that help? Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions?
Mr. Alex, you look like you want to ask a question. Okay. Glad. That means you understood everything. Yeah. That's that's the right. That's a good attitude. We can learn from these characteristics and qualities and activities of Balaram some of the things we need to make progress. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Uh, I have uh, experience in my daily practice of devotional service that I know that I have to do something, but I really can't. <laughs> and uh, I think Vaisheshka Prabhu told that this lack of uh, spiritual strength. The lack of what? Spiritual strength. Strength, okay. And uh, just maybe practically some uh, advice from you. Uh, that is... a. Uh, it, it, it happened to me daily, every day, that I need to do something, I have to do something, but I have difficulty to move myself. To What yeah. to do, actually? Yeah, yeah. a lack, lack of spiritual strength means, could be mean, take the form of the determination to do what is not there, or the importance of doing it. You, don't, you know you have to do it, but you don't have enough importance. So you don't. So somehow you see something else is more important. But again, it comes back to the same thing: praying to Lord Balaram to give you that spiritual strength. He, the we 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 think that prayers are just nice things to do, but if you sincerely pray, you get exactly what you pray for immediately. If you sincerely pray. This one devotee was telling me just the other day, she was out walking in the woods, so she sat down to chant japa, and she couldn't chant, and she was feeling really hard. So she just started to really cry out to Krishna, Krishna, oh Krishna, I'm trying to chant your name, I can't chant, I'm feeling so pleased. And she was like begging. She described, I was just begging the Lord. All of a sudden, she was chanting nicely. The thing is that that's what it takes to get the mercy. You have to cry out for it. <laughs> you have to beg for it. You have to really want it. And Krishna will give it if you sincerely want it. But if you think, I'll just try for it and cry out, but if I get it, that's nice. If I don't get it, it's also nice. No, you you want you to think, I have to have it. <laughs> Hmm. Serious. <laughs> if you start doing that, you'll find it yourself becoming more, things will become more natural. But we have to want, want it. We want, if we don't want it, if we're just like routine or mechanical, then we may get it and we may not get it. Most of the time we won't get it. <laughs> Bhakti is emotion, but it's emotion guided by intelligence. You have to wake up that love in your heart and direct it in the right way. Mm -hmm. That's bhakti. Yeah, thank you. Maybe one more thing that is not necessary part of your lecture. Uh, when I chant Hare Krishna, I can't explain myself, uh, even logically, what is connection between Hare and Rama. I mean, what is connection between Radrani and Lord Bar Balaram? It is just is bothering me a little. Yeah. What, what Balaram in the Maha Mantra? Yeah. yeah, I know that Balaram is Rama. Okay, yeah. but Hare Ram, Hare Ram, what is connection, yeah, real the, connection from? Yeah, yeah, it can be Revati, 
It's one of his consorts. It's the energy of Balaram, the spiritual energy. Hare always refers to the spiritual energy. So it's with Krishna, it's Radharani. With Balaram, it's uh, Revati or Kalindi. And with, uh, with uh, Ramchandra, it's Sita, Sita Ram. Mm -hmm. It's the female energy, which is the spiritual energy. You have the energy and the source of energy. Hare is the source, is the energy, and Krishna, Balarama is the source. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ananta, we have a question there. Comment? Okay. Hare Krishna. Just come on, Maharaj, and um, it's from Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita, Bhakti Thakur's explanation about these demons. Mm -hmm. uh, I already read for Parama Sumer in the morning. There are three anarthas connected with this, which represents, and we have to deal with Guru, uh, with Guru Tattva. Mm -hmm. One is that you mentioned is Kama, lust for the opposite sex, then Loba, greed. And then is also desire for worship and position, mm. puja and pratishta. Pratishta, yeah. So there are three anarthas: kama, loba, puja, pratishta. Ah, yes, yeah. This is um, and uh, denuka sura, also from um, um, Denuka represents complete ignorance of spiritual truth, originating from material intelligence. Mm -hmm, it's yeah. first one. Yeah. Then second, uh, what represents an art, lack of spiritual intuition. Mm -hmm. Just dull. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, the expression here is stula, stula buddhi. Stula buddhi. Stula. It means yeah. gross intelligence, not able for subtle discrimination. Yeah. This is good Just one. give me my newspaper and my can of beer and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> And the third anartha is foolishness, which is contrary to spiritual knowledge. Yeah. yeah working hard for material things. Yeah. Sometimes we also say accumulating material knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Very good, thank you. That was a complete in, uh, description. Uh, and a um, question. These names which you were reading are from Karga Samhita? Yeah. Canto 8? Um, it, it doesn't have any reference Chapter here. 13? This is uh, let me Shri Balabhadra Sahasranam. Is it thousand names of Lord Bala? Um, well, these are just, this is just, uh, this says this is a verse. This is just one of the verses. And I didn't even give you all the names. There's another 20 names that I didn't mention. At least 20 more. Yeah, so there is a verse, but I just don't have it written I here. I have here, f it's the same what you read, it's from Garga Samhita. Right. 1,000 names. Right. Which will be, which is planned to be chanted on Monday on the Shibadaram Homayagya. Oh, good, 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 good. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a marketing part. <laughs> yeah, Balaram's... Uh, we're going to chant those thousand names? Yeah. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And this is going to go on during the puja? It's, uh, it's 4 o'clock, before the Abhishek. Before the Abhishek. Just uh, like a yagya? Yes. Oh, wow. Very good. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So, Sri Balaram King, Sri <laughs> Prabhupada King, and come back tomorrow for tomorrow's class will be Balaram again. Is it? Tomorrow's yeah. Okay. All right. That's in the morning. Okay. <laughs>